Josiah was an important king of Judah, whom the Bible praises as the greatest king since David. He was the son of King Ammon and the grandson of King Manasseh. Josiah is well known for his major religious reform that centralized the worship of the Hebrew god Yahweh in Jerusalem and strongly repressed pagan religions. He also attempted to extend his control beyond Judah in a drive to reunify the former northern kingdom of Israel with his own. The biblical authors view Josiah as the greatest of all kings in his devotion to God. Neither before nor Joshua was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength, in accordance with all the laws of Moses. The biblical account does not begin with his birth, but with a prophecy three centuries earlier by an unnamed man of God in the time of King Jeroboam. This prophet reportedly predicted the act that would win Josiah his reputation as a king fully approved by the biblical writers, namely the destruction of a rival Israelite sanctuary a few miles north of Jerusalem in Bethel, and the execution of priests who offered unauthorized sacrifices at the high places. It is said in 1 Kings, O altar, altar, this is what the Lord says, a son named Josiah will be born to the house of David. On you he will sacrifice the priest of the high places, who now make offerings here, and human bones will be burned on you. The story is taken up again in 2 Kings 22, when Josiah became ruler of Judah at the age of 8. His reign resulted from the assassination of his father, Ammon, by court officials and the people of the land. Both international affairs and Judah's internal situation at the time were in flux. To the east, the Assyrian Empire was in the beginning stages of its eventual disintegration. The Babylonian Empire had not yet risen to replace it, and Egypt to the southwest was still recovering from Assyrian dominance. This favored the resurgence of Jerusalem as a serious power in the region. The nation of Judah was finally recovering from a devastating Assyrian invasion in the previous century that resulted in the capture of every Judean town except the capital. Josiah's grandfather Manasseh had reversed the Yahweh only religious policy on his own father Hezekiah, and Josiah's father Ammon continued in Manasseh's footsteps. The boy king Josiah was strongly influenced by the priest of Yahweh who raised and protected him. By the age 16, he had already become a strong devotee of Yahweh. At 20, he had instituted a program to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, Hasharat poles, carved idols, and cast images. At the age of 26, Josiah began a program to upgrade the Temple of Jerusalem, authorizing the high priest Hilkiah to take the tax monies that had been collected over the years and use them to repair the neglect that the temple had suffered during the reigns of Ammon and Manasseh. Hilkiah claimed that while he was clearing the treasure room of the temple, he found a scroll described as the Book of the Law or as the Book of Law of Yahweh by the hand of Moses. The king checked the scroll with the prophetess Huldah, who declared it legitimate and predicted that Josiah would soon die in peace. Huldah's endorsement of the Book of Law not to mention her prediction of his imminent death prompted Josiah to redouble his efforts to purify the religion of Judah. He instituted a national celebration of Passover, ordered the slaughter of pagan priests throughout the land, and burned sacrifices to Yahweh outside of the Temple of Jerusalem. He also attempted to corral even private religion's activity that did not conform to the standards set forth in the newly discovered Book of the Law. Josiah got rid of the mediums and spiritists, the household gods, the idols and all the other desertable things seen in Judah and Jerusalem. This he did to fulfill the requirements of the law written in the book that Hilkiah the prophet had discovered in the temple of the Lord. Josiah also reasserted Judean control in the former territories of the kingdom of Israel. 
This is recorded in 2 Kings as systematically destroying the cultic objects in various cities as well as executing the priests of the pagan gods. This campaign included the destruction of the major Israelite altar at Bethel. This attempt at reunifying Israel and Judah was made possible largely due to the waning of Assyrian power in the region, while the new Babylonian Empire asserted itself to the east. Pharaoh Necho II had left Egypt around 609 BCE in support of his Assyrian allies. Josiah made a fateful decision to attack the Egyptians at Megiddo, where he was reportedly struck by Egyptian archers and soon died in Jerusalem. The account in Kings 23, however, differs from the Chronicle 35 in terms of the manner and timing of Josiah's demise, perhaps reflecting the Chronicle's desire to harmonize his account with Aldous' prophecy that Josiah would die in peace, even if wounded mortally in battle. The death of the king Josiah was a serious blow to the Yahweh-only faction in Judea. In 2 Chronicles 35-25, the prophet Jeremiah wrote a lament for Josiah's passing. A Jewish tradition claims that this lament is preserved in Lamentations for Our pursuers were shifter than eagles in the sky. They chased us over the mountains and lay in wait for us in the desert. The Lord's anointed, our very life breath, was caught in their traps. We thought that was his shadow. We would live among the nations. From a geopolitical viewpoint, Josiah's death signaled an end to the pro-Babylonian foreign policy he apparently favored. Jehoas, the second son of Josiah, reigned for three months, after which he was dethroned by Necho and exiled to Egypt. Josiah's eldest son, Elakim, replaced him ruling at Necho's pleasure as Jehoiakim. When Nebuchadnezzar II of Babylon defeated Egypt at Karkish in 604, Jehoiakim and his kingdom became subjects of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah consoled submission to Babylon, but in 598 BCE, Jehoiakim rebelled. He died soon thereafter with Jerusalem under siege. His son Jehoiakim held out for three months and then surrendered. He and his entire court were deported to Babylon, and Nebuchadnezzar now placed on the throne Josiah's third son, Zedekiah. Jeremiah still in Jerusalem again urged cooperation with the Babylonian power, which he saw as God's chastening agent for Judah's sins. But other prophets urged boldness against the foreign enemy. Destroying Jerusalem in 586 BCE, the Babylonians blinded Zedekiah and brought him captive into exile with a large number of its subjects. Thus ended the Josiah's royal line, the house of David, and the kingdom of Judah. Thanks for watching. If you like to see more content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.